Hello everyone, in this video I want to talk about another LoRa training tool that is more simplified. This is called the Flux Gym. This is from the creator of Pinocchio AI, who created AI Easy Installer Browser Software that you can one-click install AI apps, for example ComfyUI, or all kinds of AI software using those tools. And right here, the Flux Gym is claimed to be a dead simple Flux LoRa training UI allowing low VRAM support using this script. And they have a very simple web UI that allows you to run locally on your machines. So for the front end, it is using web UI from the AI toolkit, which back then we talked about the AI toolkit for Flux LoRa training, and they are using their web UI Gradio based on the Gradio UI from the AI toolkit and creating a more simplified UI style. As you can see here, there are just three steps you need. And the last step, of course, is to press the start training button. And as you can see here, the VRAM, you can turn that VRAM down to the smallest size, 12 gigabytes. The middle size is 16 gigabytes. And the largest VRAM size, 20 gigabytes, which is built and set for a consumer PC display card to run as GPU processing. And right here, as you can see, it's very simple. Laura's name, the trigger word for this Laura in Flux text prompt, and set how much VRAM you want to allocate for this. And lastly, the repeat training per image in here by default is, which is normal procedure for any devoted training settings for LoRa. And the data set in here is that easy. All you have to do is prepare something like 20 for the image and put that into this drop-in upload box, and you are able to load that in the LoRa training for the data set. And of course, if you install that locally, like for example, this example here, the IP is 127.0.0.1. This is of course a local IP address. So your image is not uploaded on the internet. Your image in step two pair data set is put those images into this pipeline for the backend to run this LoRa training. So talk about the backend. It is using the Koya script. Now, we are very familiar with Koya SS. If you know what LoRa training in Stable Diffusion, SDXL, etc. is, you know that Koya SS, of course, is using this base script, the SD script pipeline, to do the backend training logic. And Koya SS, of course, right now is kind of busy with their GitHub account, but you can still click to the repository and see the previous repository of what they have done in ControlNet LoRa. Koya SS, of course, this is a very popular one for Stable Diffusion LoRa training. And we are using the SD script, which is this one. This is only the logic of LoRa training. So in here, we are using the Flux Gym, which uses the logic of the LoRa training at the back end and builds that run through this pipeline. So we are going to go through the whole process of installations and doing a simple LoRa training with the Flux Gym. So in here, I will go to do the manual install steps instead of using the Pinocchio AI browser. Of course, you can use that by simply one-clicking the Pinocchio launcher and installing it freely, automatically, without any configurations by itself. But sometimes I feel that you have to do a little configuration. For example, when you scroll down to here, you see that now let's download the models and checkpoints. Now this part, you see everything we have already downloaded. If we use Flux models already for the clips, we have dual clips, for example, the Clip L Safe Tensor and the T5 clip models. And for Flux VAE and the unit, which is of course required to be downloaded on hand, and which is of course the main thing of the Flux model. So if you have downloaded the Flux models before then, we can do this manually installed by these steps and skip the download file step. We can allocate those files from our Comfy UI system and put that into the folder structure like this to follow their model folder structure. Then we can start running the Python code and boot up the Gradio Simplify Web UI interface. Then we are ready to start training our LoRa. I think this one is more convenient for a lot of people. Back then, in previous videos, I talked about AI toolkits and how you need to run a lot of configurations. Well, a lot of people don't know coding and they will see this kind of crazy line and they will feel scared and panic and they worry about typing one thing and it will bomb their system. So having a simple UI like this makes it feel more convenient, especially for the people who try to 
use the AI with less technical stuff. They have to consider that that is a good choice for using the Flux Gym to create a LoRa model for them. So let's get started running this. And here we get the first thing in the installation manual. We have to use git clone and install the Flux Gym by default. You know this is the base of the code. So in the command prompt window here, I'm using Windows. So I will set up the Flux Gym in my E drive. So get the clone and the URL of Flux Gym and press enter. It will clone the project into my local drive. Next, we are going to go into the Flux Gym folder, which we have to do is CD Flux Gym. And we are in the folder of the Flux Gym project here. Then in the Flux Gym project, we have to clone another script, which is the SD script from Kohia SS. This is now one thing you have to be conscious of in here that you see these three letters, SD3. So the SD script is compatible for Stable Diffusion 3, SD1.5, SDXL, and also right now is compatible with Flux. So similar architecture diffusion models are able to handle with this script. So it's a very good thing to have. And after you download this, next is going to your folder structure. Check one time and see there's a few things we have to consider now when we are into the Flux Gym folder, which we just installed from the JT clone. You see, make sure you have the SD script correctly git clone downloaded under the Flux Gym folder. So you have the SD script folder and include everything from here. So we are going to use the Flux. I saw these file names. As you can see, we are supposed to use the Flux training, Flux train network, Python, and just scroll down here. As I just mentioned, we have SD3, SDXL, and there should be by default this train control network and train network. Those are for SD 1.5 for Dream Booth. So this whole script is compatible with the field diffusion model right now. So let's go through another one we have to check. Make sure you have the requirements.txt. You got lots of things to be set up, upcoming steps. So make sure you have that. And we are going to go back to the command prompt window. And in here now, we have to activate our virtual environments for this LoRa training project. By doing this, you can follow their script here, which uses the Python VenV environment, which means that is a virtual environment for your Flux Gym project. And another way is using Conda, so you can Google Conda. Right here is the Conda official site for doing virtual environments. Maybe I'll just try the default settings for this one. Let's go back to the command prompt window. We copy and paste those two lines of code and type Python venv env. It will start our environment. And as you can see there, after loading for a few seconds, we have the ampersand script activated and the bracket of endv. So we're already in the virtual environment. Then let's go back to the file explorer. In the file explorer, we'll see that we have the env folder under our flux gym. We have the script folder and we have activate right here and then deactivate. Of course, we have both batch files. That's very convenient for us to just double click this tool and start running the environment. But here we're doing that with our command prompt. So now let's go to the next step, the SD script folder and install the dependency for SD script. To do that, we go here and type pip install dash our requirements dot txt. And we start the installation step. All we have to do is just wait for this part and it will finish really fast. Okay, so after all this loading, downloading, and installation, we got this message that popped up. Everything downloaded successfully installed from the requirements.txt. Now we've got to go to the Flux Gym folder and type cd. Dot to go back one level of folder. In the Flux Gym folder, there's a requirements.txt we have to install as well. So just type this and press enter again. 
wait for these loading and downloading installations, and we're good to go. Now after all the installations in the flux gym folder requirements.txt, you should have basically everything downloaded smoothly if your system isn't experiencing any weird issues and you should have seen this message again. Now we go to the final step of the installations, which is very important. We've got to install Torch and Torch Vision. So after you download Torch, Torch Vision, and Torch Audio, you'll see this message, which means you're successfully downloading everything and installing it successfully. Now let's move to the models, checkpoints, and those files part. Here I have already downloaded the Flux models. I have the FP16, which is the default. You just put that in the file structure folder under the models subfolder. So let's go together and see how this works as I have another copy of ComfyUI in this folder on this hard disk. And I have those FP16 clips for the T5 clip and the clip L. So I put that into this clip folder. For the UNet, you put the flux onesafe tensors files here. And for the VAE, you have the VAE SFT files here as well. These are the three components that you need for the models folder. Then we can start running this Flux Gym in the next step. So the last step is in the command prompt window. You type pythonapp.pi and here we are typing this. But one more thing, make sure you enable the environment for this Flux Gym folder project. If you've turned that off, run it again. Next time you go back to this same folder in your command prompt window and you type env backslash scripts backslash activate you can activate the virtual environment for your command prompt window to run the python script under this virtual environment then it won't clash with your main system so the last step here is to enable the app.pi and it will kickstart this flux gym app in our web browser so the web UI as what it claimed, very easy, simple to use. I don't think I have to go through detail explain on each features on the web UI part. So first we need a name for the Laura model. I am gonna use my character's name and dash Laura. Then the trigger word, which I am gonna use the character name. The VRAM part for this demo. I want to try 16 gigabytes VRAM. Although I have 24 gigabytes, I can go for 20, but I want to experience how long it takes for an average 16 gigabytes VRAM display card. Lastly, 10 time per images and 16 epochs. I am keeping it by default. Step two, we are going to create our dataset. Now this web UI is even more simple and easy on this part. All we need are drag and drop the image that we want to train for the LoRa on the upload image panel. For safety check, it loaded up all images, Next, we are going to click Add Caption with Florence 2. This is a time saving as previously in AI Toolkit, I did a workflow in Comfy UI to create caption for an image directory, but this UI is even more simple. Now the first time Flux Gym run for captioning, it will download Florence 2 into your local machine. For Windows, it's going to the User folder, Cache, Hugging Face folder. Wait for the text loading, and we are done on this part. Lastly, of course, a dead simple click button to execute the training process for this LoRa model. Really simple. Nothing I want to talk more about the UI part for Flux Gym. So the train log on the bottom, it is going to show all the progress of the training. In the meanwhile, you can go have fun, play Wukong, go to shooting range, or have a coffee. Okay. So after all, we have completed this LoRa training. As you can see, it took three hours and five minutes to complete this using 16 gigabytes of low VRAM for this LoRa training. I'm not happy with the low VRAM 16 gigabytes training speed. 
Yeah, it takes three hours to do that. Usually, if I ran it with the full potential of RAM that I have, I'd be able to complete this LoRa training within one hour. But that's the reality of what I'm testing with this scenario using 16 gigabytes of VRAM. I want to show you guys that it is possible to run all this training throughout these entire experiments, but you've got to have a give and take. If you have lower VRAM, of course, you're consuming a lot more time. If you have higher VRAM, then you can speed up your training process. But so far, it has successfully completed. And there's some message here. As you can see in the saving checkpoints, it shows you the locations of the LoRa, the final training LoRa, in the output folder and in the command prompt window as well. It shows the destinations folder for the dataset only. So when you look at the command prompt windows, it will only show the creating dataset information. After that dataset is created, it doesn't show any progress in the command prompt window. Rather, we are seeing all the progress in the web UI itself. So I think maybe we can just focus on the web UI if you want to check up on the progress during the training period. Let's check up the LoRa folder. We're going to check the output folder, which is in here, and the FluxGym output. This is the subfolder in here. As you can see, this is the final LoRa for this character training .safe tensors file. There are different checkpoints for each step. Here, for each step, when it's training in progress, the total of train epochs is 16. For every four steps, for every four epoch trainings, it generates one checkpoint. So 4, 8, and 12. And then the last one should be the 16th training epoch checkpoint. You can bring all of these to Comfy UI to test the result, or you can just bring up this final output to test the result in there. So at the end, after you receive all these LoRa files, you go to your Comfy UI, or you have other web UIs that are able to run Flux, and you're welcome to do that as well. For example, here I have the Comfy UI on the left, and the right side here is the Flux Gym Output folder. So when you go to Comfy UI, go to Models, click to the LoRa subfolder, and you have all the LoRa's stored in this LoRa subfolder. I'm clicking into the Flux. Now, these are the character LoRa's that I did previously in AI Toolkit, and right now I have this one. So let's try out the only final output. I'm just being lazy, and so I'll try the final output in here. I cut and paste the Megan LoRa for this character, and we can test that in Comfy UI. Okay, so we've got a simple workflow for Flux. It's a text to image, and I've added control net using the control net union pro. We use one of the poles in here for the reference using a dense pose preprocessor. Here I've added LoRa models that I just generated using the flux gym. As you can see, I separate different ones using files. It's easier to manage like that. These are the text prompts that are going to be similar poses that will happen using this reference image. This is going to be influenced by the control net itself. So let's see what we can do and let's set it to 0.5 for the control net. Let's give it more freedom of movement here. Lastly, we're going to set the dimensions and hopefully something looks similar to Megan, the character that I created for the AI videos using this LoRa and trigger the keywords in here and generate something that I expected from my dataset image. Let's wait for a while and see the result. Okay, so we got one here. Yeah, it looks similar to the character that I have and can bring those character faces in. So here's one of the data sets for the training and we got very similar styles of outfits and the character's face and hair also look similar. I'll generate two more with different settings here. I just want to test out what kind of combinations work the best with different settings. Sometimes you can use the LoRa strength models more than once in Flux, so maybe two or three can become more influential on the outcome of the result. Right here, we have exactly the pose from this reference image for the control net, and we got two results that look similar. Of course, this one's more sharp, clear on the face, etc. And one more example of this is doing it without the control net. I delete those groups and set it lower for the realism LoRa and it can become better for the output result that I have. It looks more like what I have in the dataset. Training images of this character are very consistent. The hairstyles are the same, and the outfit styles also look the same. Looks good on this one. So, that is it for this LoRa training video. Very easy, simple to operate. If you have experiment of installation for Python app in local, 
you shouldn't have problem too much. So yeah, I'll see you guys in the next videos. Have a nice day. See ya.